don't really have anything quippy to say, so we can just, straight, just get straight to the video. So, DJ McHale is probably one of my favorite young adult authors. Um, he's written a bunch, a bunch of things in his time. One of the most popular, I think, I believe, is the Pendragon series, and there's um, ten books in the series, I want to say. I'll have to come back on that and, and say whether or not. And I've read almost all of them, except for the last two. I just, when I was reading them at one point, one after another, um, I got busy with other things, and so I just never finished it. So it's on my list to finish, among many other things. However, he came out with another trilogy uh, not not too many years ago, and it's called uh, the Silo Trilogy, and it's basically a YA uh, sci-fi um, trilogy, and to put it very simply, it was fun. It, it was a uh, it was fun. There's some thought-provoking stuff in there. He's he's very good at weaving in really adult topics and thought-provoking ideas with action and uh, just a very simple very simple characters very in a very simple world um, that turns out to be a lot more complex so it's just really good storytelling um, I'm, I'm gonna do my best not to do any spoilers on here I won't I'll just kind of talk overtly about the trilogy um, but basically the first book is it suffers a little bit from what I like to think of as uh, setup syndrome. Um, the setup syndrome is that you have a first book in a series and may end, it ends up being just set up for everything else. So you have the first book and all it is is setting everything up and then finally after that's over, you get to the second book, and that's when everything actually starts happening. Like, oh, everything really starts getting going. Um, I have that feeling about uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, being totally honest. I've actually, for the first time, only read uh, Fellowship of the Ring just recently, uh, and I haven't even read the other two yet. But I get this distinct feeling that after reading the Fellowship of the Ring, that it's it's just set up. It's 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 telling the history and is kind of getting things set up, started and going. And I have this feeling as soon as I get into the reading the the two towers that everything's actually going to start happening finally. Like everything, you know, the characters have been addressed. We've set them on their path. We've given you the backstory. We've given you the stakes. And now off you go into the second book. Um, it's not bad to do that. Um, it's not wrong to do that. Writing, writing's hard. Um, as a, as a writer myself, an aspiring author, um, it's a difficult thing to do to write any sort of story, whether it be a standalone novel, or if it be a trilogy, or if it be a giant series of, of 13, 14 books, whatever. Um, there's always that that you have so much you want to tell and how do you tell it and the way we tell stories and the way we print stories and publish them has is a very kind of cubicle kind of way of doing things cookie cutter cubicle kind of way of doing things um, and that it really hasn't changed in centuries not really um, we you know, you started out with some of the things like serials and newspapers and magazines and move on to actual, you know, collections of those serials and books. And that's how we get a lot of Charles Dickens stuff. And and then you move on to actual, you know, full on novels and they get longer and longer. Um, and then you get series of books it, in those worlds. And sometimes there are self-contained stories in each book. And sometimes they're, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Um, and so things have evolved and changed, but they're still very compartmentalized. Um, again, not a bad thing, just the way the system works. Um, 
but that that's how I feel about this first book. It was a good book, but it uh, the first book being Silo. Um, it was a good book, but it just it it felt like it was just set up. It was setting it all up, which it was. Book one sets everything up. You don't want to necessarily start right in the middle of action uh, and and not have anybody know what's going on or anything like that. And sometimes you can do that, but it's really difficult to pull off. So. You start off with these characters, they're teenagers, and I can't even remember their names. Tucker is the main character. He has a few other friends in there, but I just won't even bother with their names because apparently I'm terrible with names. Um, so what you have is Tucker, who is on the football team, his first time on, his fo on the football team, and suddenly one of his teammates drops dead out of nowhere. And from there, it's kind of a mystery because then they see some strange aircraft and this odd, you know, a strange explosion happens. And then a weird drug appears on the island. And then all hell just starts breaking loose because they, <laughs> it was funny enough, as I started reading this book, we were just started quarantine for COVID-19. And lo and behold, in that book, the island goes on quarantine and I'm like maybe I shouldn't have started reading this book um, but it it moves on from there and it's a sci-fi sci-fi book that really it's just all this setup and it's a lot of action and a lot of cool stuff goes on but then finally when they him and his friends get away from the island that's really when everything starts happening um, and really that most of that starts happening in the second book storm and then go moves on to the third one strike as they develop everything that's going on and the big twist slash reveal um that happens in the third it happens but it doesn't happen until the third book so you don't officially find anything out until book three where they finally reveal everything that's going on and what's happening and you're like oh my gosh uh, and you kind of saw it coming because again it's a it's a young adult novel. It's not going to be super sketchy, obtuse, or anything like that. So you have the idea of what's going on. And so you, you just, we just followed these characters. Literally, the first one is they're on the island, escape from the island. Uh, the second book is essentially road trip, um, where they literally go like across the whole United States, practically. Um, and then third book is defeat the enemy. Um, Good, easy setup, you know. It's a three-part story in three books. Um, and each one sort of has its own little story, but of course it's part of the, the whole trilogy and everything. But again, DJ McHale is a wonderful writer, very accessible, very fun, very fast. Um, his action is good. His characters are fun. He, um, he kind of has bittersweetness in most of his writing because you... I think we all tend to want that happily ever after fairy tale ending, even if we say we don't. Um, but he he always kind of tinges it with just a little bittersweetness of you don't quite get exactly what you want, but you get something. Um, and then I think that's a good thing to do as well. I think too many books have everything wrapped up in a nice neat bow. Um, Harry Potter comes to mind at the end. Everything's happy. Um, and I'm like, really? Because a lot of people died. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, and there's got to be consequences for these things that happen, right? Anyway, that all to say, this trilogy as a sci-fi, young adult, kind of a quick read. I read it pretty quickly. I went one, two, three, uh, down the line. Um, just read them all, all in one, one go. And, um... It's a, it's a fun ride, and I would definitely suggest his other series as well. I would definitely suggest Pendragon, um, and then he has another trilogy, and the name of it escapes me. Ugh, Morpheus Road. Um, and honestly, that's probably my favorite trilogy out of everything that I've read of his. Um, and just for some more insight on him as an author... He's written for uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark, which was one of my favorite scary kid shows um, when I was younger. It was Heads and Above, Goosebumps, but uh, Goosebumps the Show, sorry. Are You Afraid of the Dark as a show was much better than Goosebumps the Show. 
Um, but Goosebumps books were awesome. And maybe one day I'll, I'll review some of those too if I ever get around to buying some of them again. Um, but he wrote some episodes for Are You Afraid of the Dark? And he's also done a few other smattering of, of young adult television and whatnot. So he's very skilled at what he does. He's an excellent author. I think you should check him out. Um, maybe if you're into sci-fi, definitely check out the Silo Trilogy. If you're into more um, kind of horror, it's not so much horror, I guess. It's just, it's just urban fantasy. Uh, then definitely Morpheus Road and the Pendragon series. Pendragon, again, is about 10 books long, so you'll need to make an investment of, of time, if not money. Um, and then if he has any other books coming out after this video or ones that maybe I don't know about and haven't mentioned, check him out. He's a great author and these are great books. So hopefully that is a nice little fun review for you. Nothing too deep about it. Um, but hey, you got to have some fun too every once in a while, right? Especially these days. So thank you for watching and tuning in and, and giving me a chance here. If you want to check out more of my work check out my website link down below as well as the one book i have currently self-published which is on kindle kindle unlimited um you can get it in print and ebook and also you can uh, get it on audible as well so check that out if you're if you're feeling uh altruistic is that the word maybe no I don't know. Go ahead and correct me on it. I use, I use words wrong all the time. So thank you for watching. Be safe and see you next time. And yes, this is a comfy cup. <laughs>